is going to focus in on the hospital structure and we're also going to take a look at inpatient services. So we'll go ahead and get started with the foundation of the hospital to understand where it came from and how it came into being what we recognize as a hospital today. So if you think back prior to the 20th century, the only semi-formalized structure that we had out there was an almshouse. Uh, or a poor house. It wasn't really the place to go to receive health care. It mainly catered more towards the poor, the needy, those more indigent populations. Um, they provided shelter while trying to treat these illnesses the best they could. But if you were more wealthy, uh, more affluent during this time, you did not go to an almshouse or any sort of structure like that to receive your health care because the conditions were so deplorable. You you received health care and your treatment in your home. Now between 1872 and 1829 we had three main things happen that helped to formalize the structure of a hospital and start to make it what we recognize today. So we saw hospitals start to really become the epicenter of medical practice um, and start to become these more formalized uh, facilities. We also saw a technology boom during this time, um, and technology really helped to increase the volume of patients that were allowed to be treated. So we were able to do more surgeries um, and perform different services such as that, and that was all due to the technology increase that we saw at the time. And the third thing that helped to really change the way we looked at hospitals was that the profession of nursing started to become more formalized. Students started to go to school to learn how to become nurses, um, to go out and provide patient care as, a, as opposed to more of an apprenticeship model that was in existence. So hospitals becoming the center of medical practice, the technology increase, and professionalism in nursing all help this growth phase that we see for hospitals during 1872 to around 1929. So we get to the 20th century and we're looking at the 20th century and beyond and here we start to see more of a standardization brought to medical education. Um, hospitals overall are becoming more accepted by the population in general. And that's due mainly in part to the AMA who is out there advocating, protecting the interest of our providers um, and working to make the population feel that hospitals were the place that you needed to go to receive your care. And because of that, medicine and the hospital have forever been kind of linked and cemented together, and it's still the centerpiece of our healthcare delivery system today. Um, another main thing that happened during this time was the Hill-Burton Act came into being in 1946, and this had the overall greatest impact on hospital expansion. A lot of money was given into the system um, because it was thought if we could build more of these formalized structures, we would be able to open up more access to care for hospitals. So we saw a huge boom in the amount of hospitals um, and inpatient centers like that opening up across the country. We also saw in 1969 the creation of Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and this helped to fuel the demand that we saw for hospital services at the time. Now during the 1980s we saw a downsizing um, of hospitals because of our structural changes and reimbursement thanks to um, prospective payment systems and managed care, and unfortunately because of this, many hospitals had to close. Um, we were seeing more of a fixed rate per admission on your patients, um, and this really worked to necessitate a lot of cost-cutting cost measures and quicker discharge times for our patients. So the desired effect um, was that we reduced that growth in expenditures overall, and while we did see that, Unfortunately, a lot of hospitals were forced to close. Now there's six main characteristics that work to define what a hospital is. The first one of those is that it has to be licensed and typically hospitals are licensed by the Joint Commission who has deeming authority from the Center for Medicare Medicaid Services. Um, the second characteristic, uh, second and third characteristic rather that we'll discuss is that a hospital has to have some type of organized physician staff and they also have to offer some type of continuous nursing service around the clock. 
Now, hospitals are governed by um, an entity like a board of directors, and they do have a CEO or a chief executive officer with the responsibility of making sure everything's running smoothly in the hospital and they oversee all of the operations. And the last characteristic that works to define a hospital is that hospitals are responsible to stakeholders. Now this can vary depending on the type of hospital that we have, but generally what we see in terms of stakeholders are um, sectors like the community, uh, the government is another stakeholder, your insurance companies can be a stakeholder, your managed care organizations can be a stakeholder, as well as any accrediting agencies. Now when we think of hospitals, hopefully we tend to think of inpatient stays. Now inpatient stays are those that involve some type of overnight stay, so you can't just come in, um, get your treatment, and then leave within the same day. There has to be some overnight stay component for it to be considered inpatient. And historically, inpatient is what we saw as the center of the healthcare system overall, but lately we've started to see more of a shift towards outpatient services. Now these outpatient services can still be contained within the hospital structure and can be things like your emergency department, lab, your radiology, any physical therapy or occupational therapy you may need, sleep lab, stress tests. Departments like that are considered more outpatient services. Now we do see this shift towards this outpatient um, setup and this outpatient structure and away from inpatient for two main reasons, and that's simply due to cost containment measures and more of our consumer preferences. You know, consumers overall, our patients overall want to come in, get their care, and leave. They don't generally want to stay in the hospital. So there's four different ways we can really look at the hospital structure overall. We can look at it from a classification standpoint. Is it a level one trauma facility? Is it a specialty hospital? We can look at it from an ownership standpoint. So is it a for-profit or a non-for-profit? Um, we can also look at it from a governance standpoint. Is it philanthropic? Is it uh, faith-based? Is it corporate or a private company? And the last way we can look at a hospital is uh, by its licensure, its certification, or its accreditation. So does it have Joint Commission accreditation? Um, has it been surveyed by Malcolm Baldridge? Did it receive the Tennessee Center for Performance Excellence Award? Um, so four main ways we can really look at a hospital overall by classification, by ownership, governance, and licensure, and we'll get into those throughout this module. So let's look at the first way we can really start to define a hospital, and that's by its classification type. So we can look if the hospital is a teaching hospital, um, if it's a short stay hospital, what's its duration of care, um, if it has a specialty status, so is it a general acute care hospital, is it a specialty children's hospital, heart hospital, um, if it has some type of specialty status associated with it, if it has any certain Medicare designations, uh, payer status, we can also look at the level of care that it provides. Is it a level one, two, or three uh, trauma center, and what services are associated with that? We can also look at its government status, um, as well as its bed size. We can have 1,000 bed hospitals all the way down to one bed hospital, so how do we kind of work to classify that type of hospital? And we can look by geographic location. Is it rural? Is it urban? What populations do it, does it serve? Um, is it more public? Is it more private? Uh, so there's all different ways that we can start to classify hospitals and look at the structural standpoint. 